off air, you told me. Yeah. Okay, so Captain KMJ is here, and uh, I want to say a big thank you to House of Sedem. House of Sedem put my costume together for me. He said, you know what? They said you need to be a pilot, so let me just, you know, put the pilot thing for you. Uh, they are bringing my cap. still owes me. He does? He's watching. I know he's watching. You still owe me. Oh, he was asking about you yesterday. He was. Yeah, he was okay. asking about okay, you yesterday. Cool. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, um, uh, Sedem, thank you so much for this. You know, I really look good. Yeah, you right? do. You look yeah. so good. Look I'm changing so good. profession very soon. But you can find them on social media. It's house of underscore Sedem. You know, anything you want to be, they can make you be even in your mind. You don't have to necessarily be what it is. I don't have certificates. Right, so it's time for our next conversation. You don't have certificates, but yes, it's, yeah. But I'm yeah. a pilot. Yeah, but he's a pilot, <laughs> yeah. yeah. And he specifically wants to, um, um, you know, uh, control the private jets. I don't want any other thing. You don't want any other thing. No airbags, no cargo, nothing. Private jets. So we, if you we don't need have to a private jet, don't employ me. Magdan Aviation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've sent my you. document. Right. I know that Sam Wabedu is working on this for me as well. So okay. Yeah. Mm. It cool. could be it could be a possibility. Right. <laughs> okay, so our next conversation is up and um we are about talking <coughs> on the untold stories of the Mughal. Uh, before I, we went on a break, I mentioned that there are so many interesting things that we've seen online and then it, it's uh, I use the word attractive mm. because it's it, it always wants me to you know pushing me to know that what, what do these people really go through? What goes through their minds? What did they really expect? How do they prep themselves? These people who work in the morgue, how do they prep themselves to deal with dead bodies? And so our guest this morning is seated with us and he's in the person of Richard Coffey Jordan, General Secretary, Mortuary Workers Association of Ghana, MOAG. A.K.A. MOAG. Exactly. Yeah. But it, it's good to see you. Um, uh, before we came on live, we were having conversation around, yeah. you know, um, situations of um, dealing with cops and dealing with dead bodies and all of that. And uh, like I said, I've had a very personal experience. I used to be very scared, you know, of dead bodies, extremely scared. And then 2020, I had the, the, the worst part of my life you know, lost my parents and um, it was COVID. And so essential workers meant that all my siblings can move from anywhere except me. And so I had to be doing the morgue and the hospital, the morgue and all of that. And that's where I got to really be that close. You know, I got to the mortuary. Yeah. I saw how they put all these things in the noses of, <laughs> you know, and all of that. I started with my dad and then it went on to my mom. And I had an experience of that. So I remember when we were going to pick my mom from the mortuary with myself and my twin brother. And um, we had to do all this tradition and everything to make sure that she allows us to take care. Oh, yeah. Okay. You know, I think then I had already done that for my dad. So my, my twin brother was with me and he said he wanted to do that. So I said, okay, like, if you can. So I was just standing with him and then the family and then with did that. The mysteries around dead bodies. Mm. There's, there's maybe misconception about how people see dead bodies. Oh, they are that. They can do this. They do this. Is it real? Some of the things we hear about the mortuary right. and the institution, if you like, of dealing with dead, dead bodies. bodies. Well, what do you mean by this? Is it real? What is real? What is real? The, the stories the, the we've sto heard. The stories we hear. I don't like, know the like, stories. Like, like, what, <laughs> I, I really like don't one know example we just mentioned, I, 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 like I what you mentioned earlier, <laughs> that they needed to seek permission from my mom, mom. You know, from his same mom. thing happened with my dad. That, that's your culture. You wanted to do some spiritual thing for your mom, right? Mm -hmm. It's not coming from the mortuary. Okay. That's your decision to come perform something. That's why I said misconceptions about it's not, it's not things, misconceptions. So. It's, it's the, the way we live in this country. Okay. Is the idea that everybody has some spiritual something. Mm -hmm. We have to do that mm -hmm. to allow our mother to go home. Mm -hmm. And that's what you did. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. So it's not coming from the mortuary. This cannot be associated to the mortuary people. Okay. It's your decision. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm. Now, you understand? Yeah. Right. Perfectly. Okay. So now, <clears throat> tell us specifically, what you, take us through the process of what you do. Let me greet my parents, my, my, my kids. They are watching me. 
Joshua and Ellen. Good morning. You were sleepy when I left. And then to all my workers. <laughs> yes. And all my workers, much <coughs> workers in this country. Mm. Today is May Day, but there's nothing to celebrate. I mean, what are we celebrating today? Is it the taxes or what? Filwa. What are we celebrating? Much workers, we are 24 hours standing by. We are not celebrating. People but we are, are celebrating people. you. You and I, yes. You celebrate We are us. celebrating But we are not celebrating because mm. people died yesterday. Many people. And we are still waiting to make sure they are okay. That's so true. We cannot be celebrating. You know, working in the mortuary is just like working sadness. Really? Every day, yes. And the, and the reason is what? The reason is sadness. I mean, how is death associated with happiness? Okay. Death is, 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 a, is always a negative connect, connotation. Mm. Where people are crying in front of you. You see people dismantled into two. Mm. People with so many various scenarios of death before you. Yeah. You can never be happy. So, such a job that does not bring you happiness. Yes. How did you end up there? It's, 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 I call it God and country. It's a calling. I mean, we all have something to do for first, God, second, to our country. Mm. And that's how come you are seated here. Mm -hmm. You might not, you, you think you choose the profession. No. It's, it's, it's in your DNA. Mm. It's planned. Mm. It's like it's a calling. You got to do this. So you had a calling to be. Exactly. Everybody who ends up liking what he does or something, it's a calling. You cannot be happy. Even when conditions, everybody thinks that it's a bad area. And you think that's the only way for you. Mm. It should be a calling. But mm. is it something you always dreamt of doing? Or no, not at all. Not at all. Not at all. Mm. Personally, I was about moving out of this country. Oh, okay. okay. So I, I felt, look, I've heard stories that when you travel to the U.S. and other places, sometimes you may not get a job easily. Right. Mm. But the motorists may save me in terms I'm hot and that. Okay. That's my understanding then. So let me go learn it here in Ghana. So when I went, I realized that, look, things are not the way we say. It's different out there. The environment is so weird. And you mean here or outside? Yeah, here, here. OK. That it was, it was, it was just like I was caught to do something. Yes. It's like I was just caught. Jordan, move from where you are, go to the mortuary and solve some problems. Hmm. That's my calling. Tell us about your very first day. My first day, I asked my boss to put me only night shift. Only night. You wanted that? Yes. There was I told him that. I know, the reason is I want to see if I have what it takes. Okay. I was trying to turn my tenacity. I yeah. want to be sure yeah. that the so-called notion that I had, that the place is that, the place is that. I want to see if I can go through night, then I will be able to handle the day. Mm -hmm. Which was a good decision. Exactly. Me, yeah. I, I can tell you. Yeah. It was? It was. It was. See, the thing is, yes. that's where you test your ability. In fact, I was trying to take the odd. I yeah. want to see the dark part where mm. there will be light off and mm. all that. Let me see if you, I can contain that. Yes. You, you wanted to do that? Yes. It's my decision. That's what makes you a human being. You have to test the bad part of it first. <laughs> when the good one comes, you laugh. Mm. At that point, did you have fears? Of course, I'm a human being. Fear is part of us. Every human being somehow should have some fear. I had my own fear then. But you see, the reality is that I had made up my mind. Yeah. I was traveling. I don't care the consequence. Once I don't die, I survive in it. So I took, I said, look, put me a two weeks continuously night shift. Wow. So from the very first day you started working in the morgue, you requested. I requested. You any, any actually night I, shift. Night shift only. So you hadn't even experienced day shift? Not at all. Straight away, I, you went to night In fact, shift. before then, I've never worked in a mortuary. Mm -hmm. I've not gone to pick bodies. But I said, this thing, I'm going to do it. Mm -hmm. Let's see how it goes. So what happened? I was scared. In fact, first day, <laughs> yeah, <assemble. laughs> I'm just imagining you on your first day. On, on the I, I first day, and there's light off. off. First day, there, there, wasn't, there wasn't a place to sleep. So you have to sleep in an office close to the morgue. And then, you know, in, in, when we do what we call embalming, bodies were standing. Some bodies that have been there for long were standing. I say, yeah, aren't you a Standing just like any standing Against human the wall? Being. In the mortuary, yes. That's, 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 that's what you do for uh, embalming? No, when you embalm, uh, it's able to preserve you temporarily from decay. Sometimes right. some embalming can keep you, it drives away your, 
your fluid in the fluid in you mm. right. and makes you like a stone. Okay. Oh. So you can stand, you can lie, lay, you can do anything. Oh. And so without any support, or exactly without against? any support. Of really? Course. Mm. Of course, remember you know who, 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 who hang you around the, the wall. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But you see, there are bodies that have been there. That one bodies owners were not coming in. Mm. Uh, some people, because of perceived litigation, they still are not buried. And they are occupying space in the, in the fridge. And they are there as long as? As long as three years, as long as some of them, because of litigation, you can't bury. That's a fact. And the body will be there. You know the owner. Years. You know the owner. But the wife said, I need to bury. The husband said, no. the family said, no. we need to bury. Yeah. The case is in court. What do you do? You have to keep the body as long as it takes. Three years. And you know how our legal system works. Yeah. It the takes back and forth. Yeah. Who is the actual? In effect, who owns this body is another matter. So, the mortuary is not a nice place, as I keep saying. It's not a place where we should be happy to be working, though. But we got no choice. You didn't finish the story of your first day. I My mean, first day, and then we can't obey you anymore. Because no, no, we want to know. I, 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 I slept just close to the mark. Once you move from the mortuary room, you go to the office. Mosquitoes were hot. I couldn't even sleep. So I was asked to go with a guy who is already working there to go pick the body from the ward. The first day, one old lady, in fact, I will always, always remember. When they opened the body like this, when I went, the nurses already cover the body. And That's a fresh the body they yes, brought. Yes, fresh body. But you see, when we came, the woman has already messed up. You know, most of those who died, especially at the ward, were always some kind of mess up themselves. Last minute struggle. Mm. Usually, once they put you pampers, you are likely to have this mess around you. Mm. And when we came, I have to remove that from an old lady. And the environment, the, that scent alone, mm. I wanted to stop the next day. I was praying that the next day should come, so I tell my boss, it's not possible. You can't do it again. And then my guy said, oh, she? Huh? <laughs> I said, hey, so that's what you go through. He said, oh, she? Where is one? The More will come. Others. So I managed that day. My sense, oh, because I, I bathed, but still I was feeling, you know, psychologically it's yeah, already yeah. in me that I'm still smelling with this thing. Ready. Even when I'm going to take car home, how will I do that? I'll feel some kind of guilt mm. and all that. The next day, you know what baffles me? I don't know how it come light off. I don't know what happened, but light off down then. Oh, I creep to go. <laughs> that, that night. And let me tell you, normally night, we do a lot of embalming in the night. Okay. When the situation is a little calm, mm. people work, we do a lot of embalming, we preserve bodies a lot in the night. Mm. And that particular mortuary master is the worst mortuary I've seen. In fact, you see cloth, keys, everything mess up. It was a private or no a, government. A, a, I okay. mean, private people are serious minded human beings who are in business. Mm. They do their things well. Mm. For us, we think that everything is government, is, 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 is the opposite. Mm. So I was like, and there are many bodies in there. When you turn here, it's dead body. You turn here, it's dead body. You look at the fridge, it's dead body. Why ready? Can I manage this wow. thing? But because I felt like, well, if I don't do it, what am I going to do? If I fill this one too, then I'm in trouble. Once a while, you be in the mantra, light off. And many of our generators, they ready. When there's even light off, they don't have petrol. Mm. The generator doesn't have petrol. You immediately have to come out. Me like this. Sometimes you'll be walking and you see a flash as if it's a human being coming, but it's just a body that has been, you know, embalmed and laid, be, 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 you know, against the wall. Mm. It's, not, it's not an easy place. Is this work, my personal view, it is for those who have the stomach to take all things to the last. You I, cannot, I, 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 you I, cannot I, I, just wake up and say, I'm going to win. People have come three days, they are gone. They stopped. Yeah. Um, you cannot. Yeah. And, and so it's not, it's not, especially in Ghana, because of the nature and our belief system, mortuary is like, a, I don't know. I, I still want us to demystify this notion, yeah. you know, of um, some people working in an environment like that and experiencing mysterious things i don't know for your story i don't know what you have heard or what you have also you know read from that but i want to find out is it real that there could be a dead body in the morgue 
but their spirits or whatever it is. Did you ever have to experience that? Have you heard people talk about the fact that, oh, this person does not want us to embalm the person. Yeah, he's behaving, he's misbehaving, he's doing this, all that. <laughs> I, I want to understand that. I, I always push it back to you because it's like people think that uh, mortuary is a spirit. Let me put it. You don't it's, push it back to me, just demystify it. it, it yes, I'm going, to do, yeah. I'm going to do that. I've yeah. done a lot of that. Yeah, okay. I've done a lot of that. Mm. What I know is that the mortuary, <laughs> I call it dark zone. The building itself. That inside. Okay. Every spirit you think about is likely to go there, especially negative spirit. You know, negative spirit like dark and bad places. They like negative area. Mm -hmm. It's all of the like areas that are full of. Remember that the people we are dealing with, some of them, in fact, many of them, will be in the spirit. Like you were going for your mother, you had to pray. Why? Mm -hmm. Why do you think that your mother, who is lifeless in a mortuary, just come and pick the mother where you say, I have to come and perform. It's mm -hmm. your belief. This country, we believe in so many mystical things. Mm -hmm. Our culture has really relegated really us to being very, very spiritual. Some decide to be religious too. But mm -hmm. some of us who are very spiritual, we know that mortuaries is full of spirits. Mm -hmm. You can't see them if you don't have that eye to see. Okay. If you want to see, you will still see. It's a decision. So they in my personal it. view, I don't have the power to see. So I did not and still have not experienced such a scenario. But I can tell about three, four, five of our members who have experienced such situations. If you want to hear, I'll they encountered you. Yeah. Yeah. I'll I'll tell one. Can you tell us two tell one stories? One. Okay. Maybe one or two. Let me pick one from the north, but I will not mention the first one. It's fine. He's a chief. He died and it's like he was brought to the mortuary. They brought him to the mortuary and the fridges went off. All the fridge. All the fridges went off. The light went off. They had put him already or they had they just brought about him, to. Laid him down, put him into the fridge. Psh, the whole place off. But there were lights around. It was just there. Just mortuary. there. So they removed him. Then the light came on. They put him back. It went off. They did that about five times. So the, the, one of them who came, the daughter also said, my father said he didn't want to be in the, uh, he shouldn't be sent to the mortuary at all. So they had to take the body back. Mm. That is one. One, I'll tell Accra here, I will also mention Accra here. Mm. The body changed. Changed how? The body was brought to the mortuary. The day they were about to pick the body, changed to a different human being. I've said it all. But people, the, when they. When, and the family uh, could not bury. No, because uh, the fact is Jordan, not. There. Yes, before you continue, people, when, they, when people die and they put them in the mortuary for a period of time, that's a bit of change, right? It's not that type of change. Okay. We know the type of. You see, where you have. You don't have teeth. Mm -hmm. But let's say you have teeth. Mm -hmm. Then all of a sudden, you don't have anything. Okay. That could not change. It's a drastic, no, no. drastic change. change. Where, for instance, your, your, a, a man changed it to a woman. It's not mm -hmm. possible. Mm -hmm. When the family know that we brought a man here. Exactly. And the person is a woman. So the much attendant were immediately picked. Sent to the police station for having missing a body. It could, it, could it also be that, yeah. and I want you to just clarify that yes. too. Could it also be that maybe mistakenly it's not, they tagged the person? We, are, we have those ones. We have those ones where uh, many of bodies have been swapped. I mean, because of some negligence and all that. Sometimes from the our people, sometimes from the clients himself. Some people have come to pick wrong bodies because mm -hmm. they are not willing to even identify their own father. Yeah. And it happens. But this one is a different case. I'm telling you about the same body that post mortem was carried out and proving that this is your father. Mm. Even before that. Mm. The people had to go consult spiritual people. And they were told that their father told their mother that he was in a sacred court. They are not supposed, the children must not enjoy over his death. And the certain rituals were performed, like you did your mother. So he wanted to show them that it's not about killing the cow and the world stuff, enjoy about me. It's about doing what I feel it should be done before you bring me to the mortuary. Wow. 
So these are the things that happens in the mortuary. And it's not an area you should be very happy. But you have uh, never encountered such stories? Personally, no. And I don't want to. So that's your mindset? Yes. You, I've, I've, I don't even want if it's assist, I don't want to. I don't want to. I, I don't know how I'm going to take it to see. I, I, I don't want to. It's not good to say I want to see spirit now. <laughs> you want to see things you've never but it's seen. Not, it's, it is hmm? not your decision. No, but I don't it's, want to. It depends see, on the body you're working on. Right. Yes, but the spiritual, you see everybody in the weights in terms of your spiritual capacity. Mm -hmm. If you decide to be like, oh, I want to go for certain things to see these things, you will always see that. That's them. true. So it is true then that a lot of people who work in the morgue. It's not only morgue. As we sit here, you are spiritual people. This is a twin. I have a twin. You are a twin. Mm -hmm. Why did your twin brother say you have to perform some rituals? Please. Well, the family wanted, and they, they and had he's to delegate one to the person family, to do it. He's connected so. to the family. You yeah. are connected. He's connected. Mm. I understand, and we've been hearing, that most media people are all occult people. <laughs> Is it true? <laughs> because, you see, these things, they only relegate you to the mortuary as <laughs> if it's a place. In Ghana, I'm saying that everybody has got a particular belief. Some are Christians. They pray to Jesus Christ before they work on their body. Some do whatever they want to do. It's their decision. My decision is that I don't believe that I don't have to go for anything to work on a life-led body. Somebody who is dead. And that has worked. If you think that you have to consult some spirit, I'm telling you, you die before your age. Because there, we have every spirit operating on each of them. Can you contain all of them? Mm. You cannot. Because somebody who is high level or something, and all his powers are around him trying to make sure that the body is buried before they leave. You cannot, you cannot. We'll so in situations like that, you have not experienced it, but those you've spoken to, yes. in situations like we have mentioned, mm. what does the person do to maybe let the person understand that we're not here to harm you, we're here to just help you or whatever it is, in terms of situations like that? Well, my, my experience with my people, because I'm the general secretary, I made them. Of alone. course, yeah. I, I know that many of the young people, especially the multi workers now, don't really believe in having to go for something to work on those things. Mm -hmm. So we are not seeing or we are not hearing more of spiritual things. We hear of stories where a body is swapped. This thing I heard because one, I'm the general secretary. Yeah. Two, because it landed them in the police cell. And it's always okay. going to come to it's your table. Exactly. So, okay. Yeah. Okay. Otherwise, some of these things, mm. I wouldn't know. Mm. Mm. The reality is that every mortuary and the workers there have an individually has a way of going to work on their body. If he has to do some prayer, like we all do, when you come to this studio, I think before you enter, you pray. Mm. From your house, mm -hmm. even yeah. before you start work, you pray. If it is the, the, the decision of the individual mortuary attendant or worker, say that let me pray before I touch this body because I don't know what spirit it came with me. I don't know what are standing behind it, yeah. whatever. That is it. Some people have misconstrued that to say that multi workers will have to chant some things mm -hmm. before they work on the body. Mm -hmm. No, I don't think that we should go that way. Why do we always make Ghana look like it's always a negative thing that happens here? I think I have a problem with the way we think. I mean, it's a working environment. Doctors, they pray before they embalm, or they, before they operate on bodies. Mm. If you don't know, they do. Mm. Every human being should pray before touch something which, which, which has some capacity or that idea that that level of spiritual something energy mm. so it's it's normal mm. okay. i don't see it to be any odd thing okay but yeah. that's the notion though it, yeah it exactly yeah notion, yeah now i'm interested <coughs> in knowing when a dead body gets to you the process that you take yes. the body through so let me take you through this one mm. uh, dead bodies come from let me say two mainstreams to us okay one is coming from the hospital where the person is dead mm -hmm. For instance, the ward, mm -hmm. and then one is coming from the house. Uh, for this country, this is the process in which bodies come. Accident victims, some straight to the ward, some straight to the mortuary. Okay. These are the two streams in which we receive bodies. Now, when the body comes, first thing is to, we tell you to go to do some paperwork. We need to register, you need to register your body with us, that you have brought, let's say, Jordan, I will die one day, it doesn't matter now or tomorrow. So maybe Jordan is dead, I'm here. So you, you brought me. I remember, you remember when you went to do your mother, you have to do yeah. some paperwork and all yeah. that. After that, we have to determine whether that body you brought, we have to go through either post-mortem, autopsy, 
Okay. They make it easy. Mm. Or the body should strictly be embalmed and kept. First thing is you have to bath the body. Okay. Because where it is coming from, it might have, you know, mess up itself or he, his or herself. Mm. You have to bath the body. I mean, it's just common sense that anybody from somewhere you have to bath and put kept. So if it is determined that post mortem will have to be carried out, then we have to wait for directions and command from the family and from the pathologist. Okay. These are arranged, and then we go to assist the pathologist. In fact, we do most of the dissecting and cutting. As for the pathologist, I can tell you for sure. Um, anybody can, can, can argue with me, but we do most of the cutting. What they do is to pick what they want to go and do their yeah, professional examination, oh. examination yeah. and come out to express their professional opinion based on the medical cause of death. I always say that we have two forms of death or two types of death, just like two ways in which people can come in. Mm -hmm. You and I know that if somebody is beaten by a snake, he's dead, he's beaten by a snake, right? Mm -hmm. Is it not death? Yeah. If anybody should ask you what kid, what's the or what now? But why would the doctor want to know why? Mm -hmm. you no, know, we know. say card natural. Everybody knows that this guy died of car accident. Yet, doctor said let's buy because medically, medically, that death might not necessarily be the reason why that person is dead. Okay, yeah. there is a precipitating <clears throat> factor. Mm -hmm. Okay, something that has accelerated the baby. I'm not contempt. Mm -hmm. Right. So it could have been a snake bite, poison, but, but, but there could but, have been something else and, that and, triggered. Listen, it could be two, two of you could be work, working. The same snake bite, he may survive. Mm -hmm. Okay. You may die. Mm -hmm. You may die. Mm -hmm. Why? So that is what the doctor is interested in. Right. So I call them doctors, doctors, pathology, a specialist. They will find out whether you have some underlining conditions, diseases, yeah. factors or the conditions which may actually cause your early death. For some people, you'll be in a car. That's a shock. They are gone. Obi, I didn't make sure is still alive. Mm. So that is it. Medical cause of death. That is where the pathologists will come in. We assist them to do this dissecting by setting, and then brought back to the mortuary. Does that happen right on the spot when they dis made the decision is made, or maybe we would have to wait for three days? And no, it doesn't matter. Period. Doctor will determine. So that he, period he will of give waiting. Us yes. What do you do to the, the body? The body is preserved. Okay, already. You will not put chemicals. Okay. I was coming to the chemicals because okay. there are two ways of preservation. You can either put direct, especially when the body is in waiting for post mortem to yeah. be carried out. Once you put chemicals, it becomes another thing. The body is frozen. You cannot easily um, uh, uh, do post mortem. Mm. So until post mortem, until that decision is taken, the body will have to be in waiting with us, maybe in the cold room or a place where it will not get rotten. Okay. Uh -huh. So that is what happens. Then once the body, that decision is made, the body goes to the theater, it is embalmed, the necessary, whatever is taken by the doctor, and he is now going to do his examination, and then we stitch back that body and bring it back for proper embalming. Because first one was just temporal uh, okay. preservation to make sure that the body is kept for post-mortem. Once the post-mortem is carried out, we are now coming to inject you with something that to make sure you are you, you sleep forever. Oh. Yes, that is what we call the formalin. So even after the person is dead, yes, you still have to inject the person with something. We we do. Should I say inject infusion? We infuse into you a liquid, a liquid gas, which is formalin, to make sure that you are preserved until you come to take your mother home. That is the chemical we use. We call it formalin. It's, okay. it's, from, it's from a parent, something called formaldehyde. Uh, it's a chemical, it's an, it's, let me say it's a subset of formaldehyde. It's a strong gas and it's used to preserve all bodies. Mm. Like as a Kobe, it's not Kobe. If you put some meat in the fridge, you see the way it looks. Mm -hmm. That's the way it's good. Because you see, the advent of uh, fridges and the light tops will not be enough Mm. Okay. to preserve okay. you. Mm. Okay. And research has shown that those things have actually kept bodies in the different... But this formaldehyde will actually preserve you at least for sometimes, six months, sometimes, and more. Tell us about the instances where um, 
the the insides of a dead mm. body are taken out and or uh, instances where it's left in the body is there anything like that is it every time that they're inside it's of not a dead every body? time sometimes okay. sometimes you might even take something small you don't even need those things it depending on what the doctor is looking for sometimes you only take off your your head cut your head into two and take something here sometimes i say yeah come on mommy sometimes take then you food. leave the rest yes in there. You, you can't take somebody's uh, this thing away. Why are you going to take it to? Because there were, there were, there were, there were, there were notions that, like yeah, that as well. Yeah. Yeah. So when you die, they take your intestines. Thank God, thank God they are no sins and they are no facts. facts yeah. Yeah. Thank God. But yeah. I'm here to tell the whole country mm. that no much attendant is interested in taking your... Where would I keep it? Send it to my house? No. We don't need them. Just like the way when you give the plant certain things are taken out, right? Uh, those your things are taken out. Why, why are they giving to the family to go bury? Some people think it's spiritual, they have to go bury and do some performance. Mm -hmm. Whatever it is, more trees, we preserve our ethics. We don't take any part of you anywhere. Mm -hmm. We make sure that once the examination, the examination is done by the, the doctor, he takes it to his lab. Mm -hmm. Go and look at why, whether it's a cloth, yeah, whether it's what, 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 and all that. Mm -hmm. And then even after everything, those things are packed and sealed. It's yours. It's dangerous to take somebody with dead body. Part, part yeah. or part away. You do not know where or how the person, like we're praying to your mother. Mm. Assume your mother uh, has some spirit within him to act, and you are keeping part of his. You what? You harm you. Mm. And I'm your boy. But we watch Nigeria films, you know how <laughs> <laughs> people throw their hands. Sorry, but you, you think those things do not really exist to a large extent? I think that I have not said they don't exist. I've mm. said they exist, but depending on you, the individual. Okay. If you think that you want to make them exist, so That's, be it. Yeah. If you think that they don't exist, so be it. Mm. Personally, I think they do exist, but I'm not interested in having to face them. <laughs> So I don't go. <laughs> you're not interested. No, 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 no. You're I told not you. Yeah, I told you. I mean, no. I've, I've been straight with this. Yeah. Straight for from the one that. <clears throat> it's the individual thing. Look, mm. I sent my mother to the mother. I never prayed. I never said, oh, mom, I think you'd be, I said, mommy, look, these things. I believe that my mother is dead. At the point that he was in the mortuary, he is a lifeless human being. Mm. If I want to believe anything and start praying and all that, master, for what? Am I praying to a dead body or I'm praying to the spirit? Which mm. one should I be praying to? Mm. Which one did you pray to? Mm. Which one did you pray to? Mm. Which one? So there is a decision. And depend on your spiritual affiliation, right? If you are feeling that most Christians have always said hypocrisy level, 100%. Mm. You are a Christian. You go to church. You are praying to a dead body to give you way. Are you serious? Are you serious? Mm. And many families do that. They should come out and say, I'm lying. So they, well, it's believed to be a tradition. And so you are... Even then, if, even if you're coming from a Christian drink. background and you want to argue, they sometimes... They should not bring the drink to come so, and pour there and tell us, oh, yeah, but say, yeah, mama. Right. Mm. I name all these things. It's not hypocrisy. So, um, some time ago, about a little over six months ago, yeah. there was a story um, that happened, something, a case that happened in the U.S. A lady who actually got pregnant, okay. who was working in a morgue, yes. had sexual intercourse with a dead body, and was actually impregnated by by the dead body. How possible? You want me to tell you that it is true or not? Is it possible? <laughs> you see, I'm not a spiritual person. I've told you <laughs> that these are spiritual things. It's but spiritual, are... but it was a physical act that the lady did. Then it wasn't the dead body. Mm. So it wasn't dead. If you say something is dead, do you understand it? So it what is death? Sperm. You are bringing us to a subject where we will look at what is death or who is dead. Mm. Dead means that you cannot work mm. have you seen a dead man's excuse me to say this thing rising before mm. then the person is not dead if someone pretends to be dead and come and chop <laughs> you out i know there's <laughs> that's a different issue <laughs> that's a different <laughs> issue, <laughs> <a> different issue. <laughs> i mean you are pushing it to a point where <laughs> this argument to land us somewhere please please a dead human beings cannot even think about himself see when you are dead you are dead mm. Mm. Wah, your everything stops working. So that you, you can't even tell your sister that I have gold in my room, go and take it. Mm. You can't. Mm. That is how come I've always said that working with life, dead, but it's more difficult. 
100% more difficult than working with people who are alive. Because at least they have what it takes to tell you, say, oh, Mihana, yeah, This all that, yeah. The most painful part is that how can you be dead and somebody is pulling you on the ground and you can't even say it's paining me. So that is dead. That idea of so being in Akoda, no, 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 one is spiritual world, or maybe for all you know, Kranaji Mun and your papa. So these things, we will not, I will not even discard it because I'm not a spiritual person. Mm. I mean, person made me mention, I don't want to say yes or no. Mm. Whatever it is, on who did this, or that day we are It's not possible for a dead person to, 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 to produce, to, to, especially at the monetary. I mean, how? Okay. So would you also she might discard? be she might be pregnant somewhere for somebody and then yeah. tend to I mean these things happen. So would you also discard the stories going around that some much men sleep with nice looking ladies who is it only much we have much women also at the mouth. Do they also sleep <laughs> okay, with the men? Okay, okay. <coughs> so I I'm yet to see you. It's not true. Let me it's make it clear. True. Because of those listening. Sincerely, it's never been true that I don't want to say it's never been true because I'm not there all the time. Mm -hmm. I want to be frank as much as I can. For anybody who do that, the person might be under two things. Mentally insane or spiritually insane. Okay. Let me make it clear. Mm. For any human being that who want to say that me, I want to sleep with somebody who is dead at the mock, then the person might be either mentally insane or spiritually insane. I think you should take it as that. Mm. Any other thing. Look, when women die, to be sincere, things that, excuse me to say, comes out from them because of their, the way they are created, it's not pleasant. It doesn't make you even, it doesn't, it doesn't look attractive for you to even try anything funny. How can I, ah, excuse me to say it. Because how, how is that possible? I remember this job we do we believe we believe in respect for our clients that's also another thing yeah we, we're trying to dignify those who come it's just that here in ghana because of the arrangement in our motries and the fact that conditions are not favorable we see that sometimes we look very sad and want to let me say deal with the public as if as a same fire mm. it's not true mm. we are emotional human beings when you die, we pity you. The conditions you die want to even know we are interested. We want to even pity you. Sometimes we go and cry. We won't tell you because mm. it will aggravate your problem. So mm. I have done that before. Several times I did that. I have to emotionally go cry and A come back and that say, oh, and yeah, yes, she why? People don't cry like that. Who told you that? You just have to I've pretend. had people tell me You that. just have to pretend to behave as if to, you don't yeah. care. Because if we give you the space, you even follow your mother to the fridge. Mm. Don't say people have died on the very act that mommy will never call. They can't jump inside. No, except for the man. Mommy will never call. Except for the man. So at the monthly, if you give them the space, I'm not sure she would allow them to. So it's still your point. So sometimes we call, call, madam, yeah, why, madam, yeah, we do that to psychologically make you feel like we are sucking you, though, but we are trying to make you, you know, in a way. So it's not, it's not, it's not easy as that. The job is very 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 involving sometimes you just don't want to talk you know if we talk there will be trouble <clears throat> mm. if you just join us here on the show let's just engage our viewers a bit um, i'm sure you've been following the conversation so on labor's day we're looking at the work of uh, the mortuary man here in the country and we have the secretary with us here uh, muwag uh, mr jordan is helping us understand the job and what it entails and some of the, you know, misconceptions around it and all of that. And we've been speaking at length. You can send us your messages on social media, uh, Joy Prime TV on Facebook, on Instagram, and on Twitter. Our WhatsApp line is on your screens. And so if you have any question you want to ask him, if you're, you know, really not sure about something, you've heard about so many things. He's cleared most of the issues, though, you know, but if there's something on your mind you want to ask, you can also send it to us and we're definitely uh, would make sure Someone that Someone has gets actually sent a concern. I said that. Someone okay. has sent me a concern <clears throat> that I want to ask you. Richard? I hope it's not legal in nature. Legal. <laughs> you are not go there. <laughs> I don't want to content it. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe you can ask, and then yeah. the next thing is we'll be finding out the major challenges I will do that. you face. Do All right, that. Okay, so people are really watching. Mm. Yes. And someone says, according to him, they don't take any part of the dead. Yes, we hear stories of they taking fluids, 
some organs for pastors, food sellers, juju men, <laughs> etc. How true is that? Every good citizen should know this, and we should all learn it. Listen, if I come to your studio and tell you that, oh, me na me your sofa, na me you show ham you should arrest the person. If you don't hand over such people to the police, then you are conspiring mm. to making <coughs> Ghana bad. <coughs> I'm telling you the truth. Most of the media people want to interview those who are not working in the mortuary. Those who are not working, in fact, there is no reasonable mortuary attendant mm -hmm. who come and sit here or sit somewhere, stand somewhere and say, mm -hmm. All the stories we have been heading, I call them mythology, myth. Many of them do not exist. It is possible, like I keep saying, I want to be frank, that some people have gone to mortuaries to demand such food. I have heard stories. My mortuary people have told me that even the drainage system, people in the night try to go behind, dig it to collect the fluid from the, from the dead bodies. <laughs> wow. How is that the business of a mortuary attendant who is in the mortuary? You are in the night looking for fluid at the back of when the drainage itself is not done properly and the place there's leakage and but what's that what's that supposed to help the person in any way i, I don't know that's it i don't go into the spiritual things i've been clear here on wow. that whatever we do in this country is an individual matter that's serious that's the truth so all this idea of saying to talk away we are talking away yeah possible we have remember that in every society we also have greedy ones yeah, yeah. we have those that are doing bad 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 things some, they believe that even to, to do something, they need some directions. I have been comforted personally by a person who wanted to be a chief. This one is a personal, that one I can tell you that one for sure. Okay. That he, he has been told by a, a priest, a pastor or so, that if you can get the, the bath, the leftover bath, the water from a dead body, uh, he, <sighs> he, when he becomes a king, nobody can take him off this tool. So I said, well, mm. I want you to tell me this. How much are you really to offer? He said, any amount. I said, ah, if you have any amount, why do you want to be chief? <laughs> because my amount you cannot pay. It's equal to your life. <coughs> Sincerely, Sorry. it's your life. It's like I said, because I will make you that you will not even live to pay. Mm -hmm. That's me. I'll make sure that you don't even exist to pay that amount. Because you are telling me to now sell myself, go and get somebody who be this year. Nishu. Nishu. Minimde, minimde will be free. Mm -hmm. I can't do that. So we have a lot of gentlemen and women who now understand that there is ethics and there is spiritual part of our lives. Yeah. Kenyans are very spiritual. I told you that. And so we, we as people, we are also very conscious of that fact that we need to preserve the dignity of our clients. Right. So we don't do that now. If they do it before, maybe now where we are here. It's not happening. It has, it has. And let me tell you, there is, I have even put, we put some things down to spy on those things because we've been hearing it. Mm. It goes a long way to damage the reputation of this country, number one. It goes a long way to damage the reputation of the workers yeah. and the facilities. Yeah. So we put in strategies. I have liaised with some security people to spy. We are spying, but I don't know. We are putting, the, we, because if we get you are out, mm -hmm. okay. and we we'll hand you over. So I've told them, anybody who comes to even demand must also be handed over. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because why should somebody come to tell us, I called you a full show to call customers? And it's the person who claimed that I put it into food and that, and we had it in st studio, and the police, police people are sleeping. They should go go and arrest yeah. all these people. Yeah. Let's find out who they are, yeah. Yeah. what they do, why that, yeah. and why are they in front of These are public health issues. Yeah. These are also matters that make up somebody to go insane. Yeah. So we have to be serious as a country and not blame people all the time mm. for the things that happen. Of course, in media practice, people call us, like you have called me, Uma Mesika Sisi India, oh, for Kamina. So, and you are uh -huh. But some people say, Mi kwa ni ama mi sika. Mi kwa yesi mi chua. There's a way they damage yeah. all of us. Media men, oh, they take money from politicians, they public story for politicians. Is it true? Sometimes it's not true. Mm. But it happens. So let's take it that it's part of the stories that we hear. Mm. But truly, truly, more than much attendance and women, no. 
I don't think I don't think it's, it's really. Now let's come to your <coughs> the challenges that you face. The challenges are numerous. They are very, very they are many. They will never end. We we have challenges for us. I believe in stretches. That when a mortuary is looking like a bank, number one, the health issues will minimize. Because you cannot stop the health issues. Mm -hmm. You can minimize them to a level that everybody will be happy. At least if I go to a, a, a mortuary and it looks like, a, let's say, stand big bank here, the environment, I mean, Wangasaka, even you, the client, you are some kind of happy that you have brought your mother to. It's yeah. The yeah. Uh, <clears throat> challenges are just number one, the structures itself, the buildings and the fridges and the floors and in the environment in which we operate within the mortuary. Mm. Many of them in total shambles. They're actually not fit for purpose, as we speak. Secondly, the logistics itself, where you have to have the trawler, you have to have the, the embalming the equipment and all that. Many of them, some facilities don't even know what they need at the mortuary to even work with. So it becomes a challenge. It makes it too manual, you know. Everything we do in this country has to do with manual stuff, you know, where <coughs> two person, somebody said even he at his mortuary is alone. He has to carry a body which is way over two and something, whatever weight. Mm. How mm. is he going to do that? Mm. He'll be pulling your mother on the ground yeah. and even damage his head and all that because he has got to do it somehow, somewhere. Mm. So apart from that, the, we, we are having, look, as I speak to you, we have three mortuary attendants in the fridge. We are going to bury this Friday, next week Friday. Oh, your uh, own people. Very young people, between 20 and 35. They're dying because, number one, the environment in which they are operating itself poses a high risk. And then instead of we, we expecting that things should be down, PPs are not coming. Look, even gloves, this one. Mm. Some will have to fight continuously and use their money to go buy. Because we don't value what is there. Mm. The dead bodies and the workers. But I tell you, everybody who goes to the mortuary pays. Mm. Yeah. If you bring somebody, mm. you pay. Yeah. Where do you pay? Administration. Yeah. So why wouldn't they then use about 5% for the maintenance and equipment? I mean, common sense will tell you that. Right. Where, where any part of your segment which is generating money, you should be able to spend it's more. Able, yeah. Money. Yeah. But here is the case, the opposite is true. Everything is done as if we don't have leadership and some of us have a problem with that. And in terms of our salaries and staff, I will tell you that I keep saying that no amount of money is too small or it's too big mm -hmm. for the mortuary workers. No amount of money. Because I can tell you, if we go to the street now and ask or go to even any secondary school or any university, ask them, doc, medicine, nursing, uh, accounting, banking, mortuary, if you graduate, which one would you love to do? <laughs> In fact, I think I'm sure that we'll have less than one person say the word. <laughs> it tells you how, <laughs> how we see it, how yeah. we perceive our environment as a people. Mm. Nobody wants to do it. But your job is unique. Exactly. That's it's where the money very, must be unique. It's very unique. Yeah. That's how come I'll say that. Look, when somebody dies, even from the day you get a woman pregnant, there's a, prof there's a professional in charge. Yeah. The midwife, the doctor will be yeah. in charge of your pregnancy. We are paying each of them. The day you are going to deliver, there's a professional. Yeah. You're being here on Moja Kra, there's another professional. Yeah. And even after that, if they have to do surgery, there's a professional. Another professional. So within those that are living, we have so many people that are being paid as professionals. But when it comes to the one person that's all, from the point of death to final disposition, it's the same people. But yet, when you talk about money, you say, oh, when mom go school, look, it's only in Ghana here, and I say Africa, Nepal, and Tukuru, where they say that the work you do is very important, but because you are not educated, yeah, you are you paid. Are not paid. Yes. I mean, does it make sense? So what's, the, what's, the, what's the range? For the I don't want to be, I've stopped mentioning range because it's not fair mm. okay. to disclose. Their girlfriends will begin to hang them all over. Some of them to their mothers. They are, they are their girlfriends will begin to attack them by scanning the brand because I've stopped mentioning range. 
what I know is that the condition is bad. <laughs> the salaries are too down. <coughs> and I think that we should stop the idea of education and pay people who are rare implementers. I call them rare implementers. They actually do the job. Because see, if you don't embalm a body for three days, it is rotting. And do you need any professional training for that? As we speak, I have advocated from the one that, of course, there's no profession that doesn't need training. And we are not exempted. The only thing is that for some time, time in memoria, nobody has thought about it. Luckily, Muag has advocated and there is a, uh, what we call, uh, an agency set up for us now, MOFA, Motorists and Funeral Facilities Agency, okay. under the Ministry of Health. They are in charge of all the areas of activities uh, from the point of death to final disposition. They are in charge of regulating every activity that concerns mortuaries, practitioners, cemeteries, and all that. Mm. They are in <coughs> charge of licensing those facilities and professionals to operate. They are in charge of controlling all activities and setting standards, education, and all that. So yes, we are in the process. Thank God Mofa um, Moak is, is, is trying to push these things to happen. Personally, it will be best for this country. Mm. And that's good news. Mm. Yes, because I, 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 I'm asking, you know, embalming is, is supposed to be a setting, you know. Embalming is a profession. Pro exactly. You know, so embalming you would need, eventually you need that training to be able to do all of that. But we do that. You see, it's only in this country that they say you need to be, you need to go and learn theory before you can do the practical. There are people who are doing the practical, they learn on the job. Mm -hmm. And that's what we do. Yeah. So whether we learn on the job or not, we should be good at what we do. Yeah. The only reason we need education is the communication part of it, like I'm speaking. Mm. If we are able to get people who can communicate well, understand the processes, understand the rules, understand the equipment, the type, how to use it, the process, we are good to go. Mm. So we should be looking at educating us more on communication, polishing the practical part of it. You will never get people who are more educated, more coming to the multi because when the environment itself is insulting, or no girlfriend, no woman wants to be associated with somebody who deals with dead bodies. But you have one. Only few. I have, I have many. Ask, many. I have many girlfriends. Yeah, because I am that I am. Jordan <laughs> remains Jordan. I, I have many. The, the reality is that... You have many girlfriends. Girlfriend doesn't mean I do anything with them. The friends, don't you have... Oh, normal friends. I'm, I'm, talking, I'm talking about relationships. I'm talking about relationships. I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know. I'm talking about relationships. I cannot be thinking for you. No, I'm talking about relationships. So let me specify. I'm talking about relationships, actually. I have kids. Okay. Kids. Okay. You're married. I have a lot of married women. I told you. <laughs> I told you that. I told you that marriage matter is another issue. Yes, of course. <laughs> Richard, you have money. <laughs> money. Yeah. Everybody has money. Depending on how you, you look have, at you it. You have. You have money with, with the job you're doing. No, 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 not at all. Why? How they, come? They, 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 they coloration. Let me put it. The money as against what we do. Mm. It's just about one percent. Mm. If you rate me, mm. I have read an article in the in, in UK, which says that if you work, you cannot work in the mortuary and be poor. Right. The reason is that that is a weird environment, mm -hmm. and people think that working in the mortuary, that decision alone to work in the mortuary, should make you well to do. Yeah. Because it will take one out of hundred. Yeah. To do that. Yeah. So if you ask me whether I have money, I think I'm the poorest. Comparatively. Do you understand what I'm saying? Mm. Okay. I'm coming from an angle where I'm speaking the truth. I believe in speaking the truth. If you ask me how much I should be paid, if you give me thousand dollars an hour, cry magic, it's because even you too small for me. Exactly. Mm. Unfortunately, those who talk about salaries and things believe that there's a format in Ghana here which is structured. Education should be number one. No, 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 no. I think we are not being proactive. We should look at what people do and pay them aside. Recently, I heard about media pay salary and co. Mm. I say, oh, that is, that is insult. <laughs> and it is happening. Is it not? Yeah. <clears throat> so the way we see things from afar is not the way it looks, actually. Mm. Uh -huh. Is this something you would do for the rest of your life? Hmm. Yeah, I say more. This thing, this mortuary work thing, eh? it was a Jumani country how? Personally, I have a lot of things that I think I should do. And I've always advised my people that working long in the mortuary itself is a problem. Because 
my sitting <coughs> down watching from back, I realized that many of them is either you die after or you die in. Mm. You don't really enjoy what you, you, you do because of the chemical we use. Oh. Okay. In fact, since 2021, we've lost almost 30 of our members. Really? Some of them kidney affected. You know, the formalin, according to World Health Organization, is, the mo is, is among the first 15 chemicals that are very dangerous and also gives us cancer or even accelerate the spread of cancer. So it's not a friendly chemical. Yeah. But you don't have the necessary PPEs. With PPE, PPE, to... gas, you see, how can you protect yourself from gas? You will do, you minimize it. But the truth is, like I've said, I've said PPE is a problem. Yeah. Yeah. But said during the COVID. <coughs> yeah. yeah. They try to come. I talk about PPs. Uh, PPs. Uh, oh, government, president said uh, we are going to do internal production of PPs. Cry, no, cry, no, no. See, the reality is that more trees, eh? I don't know how we are going to say it. Maybe we should do to we are for two months so that we see how relevant this profession is. That would be a disaster. It should be to teach people. Agitation is good for. You see, things are bound to happen when we do more what? Agitation. That's it. But if you sit down, we've sat down, we've threatened. Sometimes we feel for the public because eventually people who are at the top don't really care about what. Yeah. But they care. I mean, imagine, bro, the day you are going to take your mother, everything has been done. People have flown from U.S. to this place. You've bought all the cow and all cattle and all that. Arrange your obituary down, date fix. You are going to take your body. I see the mortuary is closed. Yeah. No worker. Mm. If you are alive, mm. I come to call Ebudia now. I'll take the person to another private person. But mm. here, the place is locked. And the way the mortuaries are there, you cannot enter and pick your body. You create what we call a disaster going forward. Mm. You might pick the wrong person. Because it's difficult to identify a person when he's dead. Even the tagging system. Yeah. It's, it's very difficult. So... Hmm, it is what it is. Mm. For God and country, we are in it. Let's so help. If, I, I, I want, I want, I, let's help, you know, um, identify the challenges again. One, logistic. Right. Two, the facility itself. Right. The maintenance of it. Okay. The renovation of it is not being done. PPEs. Mm -hmm. Money issue. Money, the anchor. I say no buffest. Oh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because you see, it drives, it, it is what it is. Yesterday, I had Honorable, <coughs> uh, this Honorable want to be president. Uh, Honorable Okoti, Ecclesiastes 10.19. Honorable Kene Japan. Okay. <laughs> he quoted you. I say, read it. They say, feast is good for what? Food is for what? But money has yes, so. all. <laughs> so I think that the money is very important. But all the same, <coughs> let me say, government has been listening. And I will, we keep engaging government to raise the bar. I mean, to a reasonable end where we think that nobody will be comfortable at least to a level where you are appreciating that you are being recognized. We love that. So our first thing, when we like logistics, the maintenance yeah. of the facility, especially our PPEs, mm -hmm. which, which for me, yeah. according to the labor arts, is, is the responsibility of the employer. So when people said, oh, now we need to talk, you see, do you understand what you are saying? Mm. It's the responsibility of your employer to provide with cameras and all these things for you to come and do your work. If he has failed, where then he didn't demanding the worker to do his best. Yeah. Uh, two things go, productivity and what? Those things must go. go yeah. You produce, you pay. But where the employer who is supposed to make me produce is not making me produce. And he goes around to say, you are not producing. It doesn't make sense to you, mm. only in Ghana. Mm. So we want to mention them. BP number one, the cash number two. Number three, the logistics itself, the facility as it is, like your room here. Because Motris has to do with fridges, it has to do with cold rooms, it has to do with the embalming equipment, it has to do with... You go to most of the facilities, the trailers are broken down. You have to manually convey a body from the ward to the motor. Hmm. We, we went to a training last week. Someone said he has to carry a body here. On the way, on the way, something that is just a pull. If I realize some blood splashing through. Oh, no. Ah, what is that? The most painful part of this job is to go, you are going to take a body from the fridge and the fluid all poured on you, straight to your body. So people should realize that we are not enjoying 
as we ought to, even even one percent we are not. So I, I always honor media because I think we should sell the issues. Yeah. So we can face them head on as a yeah. country. Yeah. And I must say that I mean I'm I'm extremely impressed, you know, with your level of uh, understanding of the job and articulation yes. of it. Um, you rightfully deserve to be the secretary like you are. <laughs> I, I think that I've, I've really enjoyed, you, you know, your understanding of the issues yeah. and, and, and the job in it's perspective. Up. And uh, I say congratulations to you and your team. Thank the you entire all. entire association. Thank you all. Thank you. Um, you rightfully deserve everything that you said that, you, you know, is supposed to be given to you. Because, mm -hmm. I mean, like you said, if you guys decide to go on strike, personally, I think that, that would be a serious, serious crisis, disaster. If I let me add you know, that, so, multi workers have been very tolerant. I know. When you yeah. compare yeah. to some other professions we know, because if their condition were to be ours, yeah. but we want to start from a point where we believe that even the people we are dealing with, dead body itself, we did say they are very important to us. Mm. We so love you can imagine. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah. we don't want to cost, but we'll get to a point where maybe. It has to happen just the more you agitate, mm. when there is proof that agitation is high, mm. it's bound to happen. Mm. Let us push it. Mm. Let's close mortuaries for about maybe one week and see what happens <laughs> at the emergency ward and all that. Uh, uh, let's, not get, let's, 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 that. Not, let's not get yeah. there. Let's not get I know there's a lot of issues, yeah. but I know, let's I know. not get there. We, we are not interested try, in Try for that. us. You know, ask for this one. Try we are trying. Us. Like you rightly said from the beginning, it's for God and country. Yeah, so. And we want to say God bless you for all the work you've done and yes. you're still doing, yeah. the entire association. Um, we also want to celebrate you and say that we value what you do for exactly. humanity. Exactly. And uh, yes, it may be overlooked sometimes. You may feel like you're not really, you know, given what you're supposed to be given. But okay. for God and country, we'll we together to. all do this and make sure exactly. that we'll, we'll move the country forward. And thanks a lot for making time for us. Uh, we're grateful that you are here. We are so grateful. And your coffee, so, we are so grateful. Uh, coffee and coffee. <laughs> yeah, the so coffees do this from their hearts. Yeah. And we don't extremely. care what happens. Yeah, extremely. Thank mm. you so much. My dear. Mm. We we'll have had a good run. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. Aye, why, aye. why are you here, Pa? Uh, and so um, the conversation has been, there were told <laughs> stories from the MOG. Our guest has been Richard Coffee Jordan, General Secretary, Mortuary Workers Association of Ghana.